Whenever you are creating complex calculations in Excel and you feel the need to test the impact of two different inputs in a specific output, you should then use the two data table. This procedure is especially useful when you are performing financial projections. The return of an investment, for example, is dependent on many inputs such as volume sold, price, costs, inflation, taxes, and others. The two data table can test the variations for a pair of each of these variables and check the impact it has in the output return, for example. This is a comprehensive video which will show you a realistic example of how you can apply the data table tool to a cash flow forecast, just so you can gain insights about a project. So let's carry on. Data table is one of the three analytical tools from the Excel What If Analysis Kit available in the field data. The other two tools are Scenario Manager and Goal Seek, which we can cover in another video. Before we explain the tool data table itself, let's first understand where and why it should be used. Data tables are usually used when you need to sensitize two variables of a specific calculation you have in your spreadsheet. A very common use of data table is done in financial projections, such as this one. In this forecast, we have eight specific inputs which are feeding this profit assessment below. This profit calculation then impacts the amount of dividends an investor can expect to receive, which as a result defines the investor's return. So here at the top, we first calculate an inflation index, which at this scenario grows at 2% per annum. This indexation then affects the price expected for this product being sold. Volume in this simplified projection is expected to be flat at 7,500 units per year, while revenue is calculated as price times volume. In terms of costs, we have a fixed cost of $100,000 per year and a variable cost of $20 per unit sold, and both costs are also linked to inflation. When you deduct the operational costs from the revenues, you then reach this metric called Earnings Before Taxes, or EBT. Taxes is then calculated as 30% of EBT, and the net result of EBT and taxes is the net income displayed in this last row. In terms of return analysis, this assessment assumes an investment of $300,000 and the dividends to be received should be equal to the net income multiplied by 25%, which is the assumption related to payout. Once you put together the expected investment and the expected dividends to be received, you can then calculate the net cash flow of the investment. Based on this series of net cash flows, you are then able to calculate the internal rate of return, or IRR, which is one of the most important financial metrics used by investors globally. Even though this is a very simplified financial projection, you can see there's quite a few calculations here, which are all dependent on these eight different inputs we have at the top. In financial projections, this first set of assumptions, which are most likely to become a reality, is called as base case scenario, which is the starting point of any projection. However, investors will hardly put their own money in a project if they don't understand the risks of investing in that project. Some of these risks can be calculated by creating different scenarios by stressing some of these assumptions. For example, the current IRR of this forecast is 20% per annum, but if I change this amount of investment to $320,000, we can then see the project return drops to 15.6%, which is quite a significant reduction. However, if at the same time I reduce the tax rate from 30% to 25%, for example, then the return increases to 20.4%, which is more than we had in the base case scenario. Therefore, we can conclude in this analysis that a reduction in the tax rate from 30% to 25% more than offsets an increase of $20,000 in the investment made. Let's now press Ctrl Z twice to return to this base case scenario. 
Even though you can keep doing this analysis manually and deriving your conclusions, it would take a lot of your time to properly sensitize all these variables. So that's the moment when you need to take advantage of the Excel 2 data table. Before applying the data table in your spreadsheet, make sure you first define which pair of assumptions you want to stress in your assessment and the specific output you want to analyze. Also, make sure the data table is created in the same spreadsheet where your inputs are located, otherwise you may get inconsistent results. In this example, we are interested in understanding the impact on the investor's return, or IRR, located in the cell C23. The first pair of assumptions to be stressed is the investment to be made in relation to the payout. The second pair of assumptions to be sensitized is the fixed cost against the tax rate. And finally, the last pair of assumptions is the variable price against the inflation rate. For sake of simplicity, we'll check the impact on the IRR based on symmetrical variations of plus and minus 5% over the base case assumptions. So the first thing we need to do here is to identify the impact on the IRR based on variations of the assumptions related to investment and payout, and make sure you have a table formatted this way, as it helps you to define the variables of your data table. The corner of this table should then be linked to the output you are trying to stress. As we are interested in the output IRR, link the cell I3 to the cell C23, where the IRR is calculated. You should now calculate the alternative scenarios for the variable investment in this row header of the table. The base case assumption related to this variable is $300,000, so type that number in the middle of this range, which is the cell L3 in this case. We now need to do a similar approach to the header in the column of this table, which in this case is related to the variable payout. So type the base case assumption of 25% in the middle of this range, which in this case is the cell I6. Now an important tip. The only link you need to do to your data table is the output which should be located at the corner of your table. Never link the headers of your table directly to your inputs, otherwise you may get inconsistent results. We can then calculate the alternative inputs for investment based on symmetrical variations of 5%. So in this cell K3, we need to have the base case assumption of $300,000 multiplied by 95%, and in this cell J3, we need the base case assumption multiplied by 19%. We also need to multiply the base case assumption by 105% in the cell M3 and by 110% in the cell N3. Let's then repeat exactly the same process for this column of this table. So first we need to calculate variations of 105% and 110% over the base case. We also need to calculate variations of 95% and 90% over the base case scenario, just so the alternative assumptions of payout are also displayed in this table. Let's then highlight with a bold format the base case assumptions in both headers, so we can use it as a reference for our analysis. Let's also press F2 in the cell I3, which is the output IRR. As this is a common output to all tables below, press F4 to apply absolute reference on this cell and press enter. As you need to replicate a similar approach to the tables below, you can now simply select this first table by pressing Ctrl A and Ctrl C to copy it. You can then select the corner cells I10 and I17 simultaneously and press Ctrl V to paste all the elements you copied. We can then adapt the last two tables with the correct inputs. In cell L10, replace this number $300,000 by the number $100,000, as that represents the base case assumption related to fixed cost. Using the same logic, replace this number 25% from cell I13 by the number 30%, as that's the base case assumption for the variable tax rate. Let's now move to this last table. Let's replace this number $300,000 in the cell L17 
by the number 95, as that's the base case assumption for the variable price in this projection. Finally, replace the number 25% by the number 2%, as that's the assumption used for inflation in the base case scenario. Once your data is organized like this, the data table calculation itself is straightforward. Simply select any cell of this first table, press Ctrl A to select that entire range, then go to Data, What If Analysis and click on Data Table. This box will appear and two entries are required here. The first one is the row input cell, which is the input represented in the row of your data table. In this case, we are just playing here the variable investment, so let's select the cell where that input is located, which is the cell C3 in this case. The second entry we need to identify is the column input cell, which is the input represented in the column of this table, which in this case is the variable payout. This input is located in the cell F6, so let's make that link here as well. With both links in place, simply press Enter and Excel will calculate alternative outputs based on the variations of these two inputs. You can now have a clear dimension of how sensitive the output IRR is in relation to the input's investment and dividend payout. Let's then run the sensitivity analysis on this second table. Select this entire table by pressing Ctrl A. Then go to What If Analysis and click on Data Table. The row input cell in this case is related to the variable fixed cost, so link this field to the cell F3. The column of this table is related to the variable tax rate, so link this field column input cell to the cell F5. You can then press Enter and this sensitivity analysis is also complete. We can then quickly complete this third example, so select this entire table and go back to the data table menu. Here we have price displayed in the row header and the variable inflation displayed in the column header. Therefore, link this field row input cell to the cell C4 and this column input cell to the cell C5 and press enter. This sensitivity analysis is also done. The data table itself is now done, but you should be able to go one step further and create a nice outlook on this table, just so others can also easily understand the results you are displaying. For example, let's assume we need to classify this return matrix with different colors. We can choose, for instance, a green background color for the returns over 20%, a red color for any return less than 15%, and a yellow color for any return in between. The most practical way to insert these colors in a dynamic way is by using the two conditional formatting. So select this numerical area of your first data table, then go to Home, Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cells Rules, Greater Than. Here let's define the threshold of 20% and select this standard green color and press Enter. We can then go back to the conditional formatting section and select this option less than. And here let's define the threshold of 15% and let's keep this default red color in place and press enter. Finally, let's pick this conditional formatting option named as between. And here we can apply both thresholds of 15% and 20%. And in this case, let's choose the yellow color and press enter. By color coding your table like this, you can clearly demonstrate the impact of each variable in the output return and how sensible the output is to each of these input variations. In case you need to copy and paste this table in any report you are producing, I recommend you first to choose a white font color for the corner of this table. Otherwise, some people who do not understand how a data table works in Excel might get confused. You can then select this entire table, double-click on the Format Painter 2 and replicate the same formatting to the tables below. 
To make sure all these calculations are consistent, you can simply look at the IRR produced by the intersection of the base case assumptions, which in all tables are equal to 20%, which is exactly the IRR we calculated in the base case scenario. You can also check if the overall logic here makes sense. For example, in this first one, we are basically saying that if the investment to be done is greater than expected and the amount of dividend payout is lower than expected, you should definitely expect lower returns overall, which is exactly what is demonstrated here. You can then easily copy and paste these tables in your report, which will also help you to produce a narrative about the analysis you need to perform at work. The best thing to do now is to practice. So make sure you click on the link available on the description below so you can download for free the Excel template we used in this video. Also, if you want to learn more about Excel and finance, please make sure you click on the second link below to access my course Excel Master. I developed this course for anyone looking to speed up their work in Excel. You also learn many financial functions in Excel how to build an amortization schedule, a more complex cash flow projection, and a feasibility study. I look forward to see you in class. Bye for now.